part one of this video uh, this is detailing a headlight switch replacement in a uh, 2008 to 2003 Dodge Ram van uh, this is a dashboard of one clean it up a little bit to make the video we were going to start with this is uh, we determined that there's a problem with the light switch basically on this particular truck what happens is you pull the light thing and your headlights may or may not come on uh, the reason for that is this is actually a pretty complex switch there's a lot of stuff inside of it because a lot of other things get turned on when the headlights on so that's what all these other connectors are for and so it's actually a fairly high amperage switch and there's moving parts inside of it that wear down and Generally speaking, it has to be fixed as a module that's not internally repairable. Uh, the uh, d overall design on these things with Dodge has been the same for about 40 years. It's just different vehicles are going to get a slightly different uh, plug variation. And of course, the vehicles that have the twisty knob light switch, that, that works differently. But if it's a pull lever thing, you're going to see on a lot of the Dodge trucks throughout the 70s, 80s, 90s, they're going to work in a pretty similar fashion. The Dodge vans with uh, the full-size Ram vans with this basic uh, dashboard configuration are going to work differently from the pickup trucks. So this instructional video will cover this. First thing to do is uh, use a common screw gun to remove a lot of the screws. Uh, where are they? One of these screws. You can you can use either. A pH 2 tip or I think that's a quarter inch tip on there to uh, remove a lot of screws that are holding this underplate on a dash. Uh, you may be tempted to go further and it's really not that necessary. Uh, basically we just uh, remove the underplate right here, remove the screws, but realize a lot of it's just pressed in with these uh, these little spring spring tabs. So. When you remove that, you kind of wrestle that out and pop that out. Now, this center fascia is tricky to deal with, okay? I'll admit it. It's tricky to deal with. You'll probably have to play around a little bit with your um, tilt wheel if you have that. You may also need to move your shifter lever um, with the vehicle turned off, moving the shifter lever in or out of uh, part to one of the drive gears in order to get this thing out to where you can deal with it. And, it. and it takes a bit of prying and screwing around to get this face plate to move. Uh, prior to doing a video, <coughs> I had it loose. Here we can see all the shifters in the way. I'm going to move that uh, and get this thing partially out of the way. If you've done any custom stuff over here, custom stereo, this looks a little hodgepodge, but that's so that I can have my four uh, lighter plugs plus the USB plug here. Uh, you, you may run into a little wire interference, but hopefully you just set that on the side as you're working over here. So here's what I'm talking about. Basically with the key in there, but the truck not running, you drop this all the way over into low one. Uh, good opportunity just to clean things off, just so it's a cleaner job. And, uh, and just gently wiggle that piece out. And depending on the age of your vehicle, the thing you got to really be careful about is where if any of this has gone brittle over the years and might break on you. So you just generally be kind of careful getting this stuff out. Ugh. So that's how that goes. And uh, in getting it out of the way, uh, you know, depending on how dusty or dirty your driving environment's been over the years, might be a good opportunity to clean some of this stuff, get at it. Um, I've had an issue with some of the switching here, so, you know, you, this is where you can see where all the, the real plugs and real screws are for everything. And then we get back over to the switch assembly itself. There's a lot of attachment points here, but the two you really got to, or four you really got to pay attention to are the ones with these screws. See, see these? Uh, so I'm going to undo those with the power tool uh, and, and feed that switch assembly out, and we'll go from there. We're tilting the tilt wheel to get it down. That also helps a little bit. Um, I'm going to very gently pull this out. If there's any resistance on the cables, I may have to reach in through the fuel box assembly to get at that. Now the other thing at this stage in the game I have to look at 
is that my battery is still hooked up. So I'm going to go outside. I'm going to detach the battery while I get on this stuff. Power turned off. What you do is you, you gently pull this out because we don't want to be jerking any of those that wiring harness. Kind of flip it around and take a good look at everything before you decide just to start yanking wires. Now, the way all the major auto manufacturers make these things, you, you can't really plug a plug into the wrong place. I mean, that's the way they're made. But you can damage stuff prying it out. And the worst thing you want to do is where you get one of these little wires pulled out of its plug. So, you know, you see how the little tabs lift up. If it breaks off, no big deal. We're throwing that part away. And so, one by one, uh, undo these and understand where they're going to go back. But basically, they only fit in one place. What I am going to do though, as I get this thing apart, is I do a little examination comparison to make sure that I have an ex a actual exact replacement part because you know, a little bit of stuff that looks different, but as long as it all plugs in together, we're good. And uh, I think we're okay with that. Okay, so the two parts separated out, they're, um, they, I just do an additional comparison to make sure I've got the right stuff. Uh, parts that are being used over again are the mounting bracket and of course the pull knob itself. The mounting bracket has a screw in there that basically you, you get out with a screwdriver uh, uh, like that. And then the trick is to make absolutely certain that you preserve the left right orientation on that because it could you can assemble that backward so when I took this off I made sure to hang on to it and and make sure the orientation stays the same um, in here you can see on the inside of this it's what the you know a little triangle fitting thing it's just it's just worn out worn out on the inside and so we're gonna put a brand new one this part goes in here now to get this out there's a little plunger here uh, little little plunger you pull, push in while you you pull everything out past its little stop and then on this one you just kind of stab that in there and it'll it'll work through that but we don't we don't want to do that until we get this thing screwed on and you can see where it, it screws on here where the switch re, uh, reassembled with the new switch and it turns out there's a little tab in here so that when you reassemble that metal piece onto it it, it only goes one way because there's a little tab that, that basically lines up with the, uh, the little opening here. And that's, that's what makes it where it only goes one way. The only thing I, I personally am not a big fan of on that is, um, eh, I don't know, it'll work. So the next trick is make sure we've got enough of the wiring harness out. I, I wish that was a couple inches longer to reattach everything and get that ready to uh, go and get bolted back into the uh, the metal sub-assembly on the dash. And with all the electrical components reattached. Now what I'm going to do is go back around to the outside um, and the way this goes in here you'll notice that um, you know once these wiring harness ages they kind of take a little set to them over age so they're just going to kind of want to spring back to where they would so that's what it's like with everything reinstalled um basically this this panel here is is a separate panel from let's say the rest of the dash and so when you smack in that back in place just kind of gently get all the little pressure points back in the lower one gets uh, screwed back in there's little pressure points and then screws up underneath to uh reattach and of course there's a fuse box cover on the side at that point, you want to make sure that you've inserted your switch handle all the way in um, because I, I didn't have it fully in, inserted and it was, you know, not quite right. But as soon as it pushes all the way in and snaps, you're good to go. And then, of course, the other function of it is that you would turn it to turn on the dome lights in the vehicle and just kind of function test everything before you put all of the screws in. And that's the um, the installation of the, the light switch. And of course, um, you you want to. I, I tested it. I, I reattached the power and tested it before putting the whole dash back together. And uh, some people say don't reattach the power until after it's all together. Well, at that point, if you have to 
take it back apart to work on it, that's kind of a dumb idea. But uh, so I test it before putting all the panels back on. And then, you know, while I was at it, the other thing to do is clean out the insides of the vents, clean out the corners as this thing's all taken apart. Um, it's a 10 year old van, and, and as you can see, everything kind of came through clean because I, I cleaned it when I had it taken apart. And in fact, took this panel over to the kitchen sink and cleaned both the inside and the outside of it.